Hello and welcomes back everyone, and Wolf here with even more Mass Effect 3. Where we last left off, we left the Moon of Palavin, after unfortunately not being able to pick up Primark for Dorian, but, due, well, due to his death, but we were able to pick up the next person down the line of succession, a General Victus, now Primark Victus, to host this war summit. Now, we just got off the vid call with the Asari counsellor, Counselor Tevos, I believe her name is, who basically told us to get lost, and she wasn't coming to the war summit due to the fact that Primark Victus wants to include not only the Salarians, but the Krogan, and only if the Krogan come to assist the Turians will he then bring the Turian fleet to Earth to fight against the Reapers. Which is understandable, but at the same time, god damn it. Bloody sorry. But uh, in this video, we're just basically going to run around the Normandy, speak to everyone. I think some people have things new to say. And yeah, that'll pretty much be this video. And then from there, if we have a quick look at our journal. Mock all is viewed. Um... We don't have much at the moment, but there's bound to be things that pop up. We may want to go to the Citadel. There's bound to be new things there. But anyhow, let's get ourselves exploring. I think that's... yeah, that's Victus there. Anyhow, let's have a quick look at the war assets. We're actually over the minimum strength right now if we had our readiness. So we have the Turian 79th Flotilla. 103rd Marine Division, the Alliance First Fleet. Okay. Actually, we got the uh, war map as well. Theatres of War. Each conflict zone has a readiness rating that reflects its ability to contribute to the final battle. Left unattended, these zones can deteriorate and reduce the overall readiness. It can't deteriorate below 50%. But this is related to the online component, but we will need to do it to increase our campaign readiness, unfortunately, but we'll look at that later. Anyhow, Primark Victus. Commander, thank you for allowing me the use of your ship, and for going along with this plan. Garrus said he had to attend to the Normandy's weapon systems. Something about calibrations. Sounds like Garrus. I'm sorry to say the Asari Counselor won't be joining us. She thinks there's too much bad blood with the Krogan. She may be right. But there'll be a lot more blood. Real blood. If we don't try. When you put it that way. The sooner we have this summit, the sooner we'll know. Is there something else I can help you with? Uh, hmm. How are things on Palavin? The casualty reports are staggering. The Reapers are using our own tactics against us. Destroy the enemy with overwhelming force. I've seen the same on Earth. The strategist in me admires their brutality. The Turian in me knows I'm watching the destruction of 15,000 years of civilization. My civilization. How is it being the Primarch? Not what I imagined. The battle of all time is happening on Palavan, and I'm light years away, reading casualty reports in the millions. If I'm going to die, I want to be with my men, so there's no doubt we fought to the last soul. I understand. Leaving Earth to save it. It's one of the hardest things I've ever done. I'm not surprised. Garrus speaks highly of you. You never asked to be a leader, yet your people will die if you refuse. We find ourselves in similar circumstances. Let's hope the spirits grant us the strength to see it through. The spirits, you say? I never know much about Turian religion. I understand this is a difficult time for you, Primarch, but Earth can't survive without reinforcements. Can I still count on your help? If the Krogan help us on Palavan, then I give you my word. Excellent. Thank you, Primarch. My thoughts are with Palavan. And mine with Earth. Good, so he's concreted his alliance that if we do bring the Krogan to Palavin, he will bring the fleets to Earth. Good. 
What? Oh, yeah. I forgot. Mm. I don't know. She's not responding, and I can't access the AI core diagnostics. Great. You better get down to deck three. I forgot about that. Yeah, um, we sent Liara back, didn't we? Because there was power fluctuations then. That's where I'm going. Ah, uh, this way. Automated systems have the fires contained. It should be safe to enter. We'll follow your lead. Joker, what's that sound? Fire extinguishers, Commander. Could be an electrical fire or something. I'm going in. You wield that fire extinguisher. Edie, talk to me. Is there a particular topic you wish to discuss, Shepard? Edie? Yes. You're in Dr. Eva's body. Not all of me, but I have control of it. It was not a seamless transition. A transition? You blacked out on us for a while there. Correct. When we brought this unit on board, I began a background process to search for its information on the Prothean device. This eventually triggered a trap. A backup power source and CPU activated, and the unit attempted physical confrontation. Fortunately, I was able to gain root access and repurpose it as I saw fit. During this process, it struggled. Thus, the fire. Edie, you need to alert us about incidents like this. You shouldn't have done this alone. Bringing the crew up to speed would have been counterproductive. All attempts to help would have been limited by reaction time. So if you're in there, are you still in the ship? I exist primarily within the ship. For optimal control, this unit should remain within Normandy's broadcast or tight beam range. Are you planning to take that body somewhere? Normandy's weaponry is not suited to every combat situation. This platform could provide limited fire ground support. You mean you could come with us? Correct. This body could accompany you to areas the Normandy cannot reach. Before we do that, I need you to guarantee this mech doesn't have any more surprises in it. Run whatever test you can. Then we can talk about using it in combat situations. One moment. I am running trials. Complete. I can send you a full report if you wish. However, my first step should be restoring functionality to the Normandy, to reassure the crew that all is normal. Just don't be surprised if the crew is a little wary of your new body. It was shooting at them a little while ago. An excellent point. I will take it to the bridge. Joker will also want to see it. On that, we can agree. Oh dear. Edie, who just walked by? Yes, it was. And Joker is going to have a field day with this. Yes, he is. Uh, while we're down here, we might as well go see Garrus then. Two of our dreadnoughts have been lost in a matter of hours. I know, Primark. I'm seeing the same numbers myself. They don't look good. can trust Shepard, sir. If anybody can get the Krogan to cooperate, it's him. He's an old friend of Erdnot Rex. Let's just hope friendship still counts for something in this war. I'm sure it will, sir. Hey, Garrus. Garrus. Didn't waste any time getting to work, I see. After what I've been through lately, calibrating a giant gun is a vacation. Gives me something to focus on. We're gonna need you for more than your aim. Oh, I'm ready for but I'm pretty sure we'll still need giant guns, and lots of them. Sovereign didn't go down without a fight. I doubt a thousand more of his friends will be any different. 
Still not convinced I should have left Paladin behind. There was a boy back on Earth. Couldn't have been more than six or seven. I watched him die as the Normandy escaped the attack. Somehow I'm still alive. And he's not. Being right about the Reapers has never felt much like a victory, has it? We both knew this fight would be tough. Damned if the Reapers haven't delivered. At least my government listened to me. Or pretended to. They finally gave me a task force as a token to shut me up. So you're their expert advisor now? Just followed your example, Shepard. Yell loud enough and someone will eventually come over to see what all the fuss is about. Not that they'll actually do anything about it. Until hell shows up at their door. Then they put you in charge. <laughs> Not like the old days, is it? Rogue Spectre and CSEC agents running and gunning outside the lines, making it up as we went along. We're actually respectable now. Yeah. I have a feeling that respect comes with a lot of sleepless nights. I can't even count how many lives are depending on us, Garrus. Well, when things are looking grim, and I'm pretty sure they will, just remember, a certain Turian friend of yours isn't sleeping any better, and he'd be more than happy to meet you at the bar and drink you under the table. Oh, please, you lightweight. Something else you want to talk about? Uh, let's see, what can we talk about? Um, well, you... Do you know this guy? So you can vouch for this new Primarch? Well, even if I couldn't, you go to war with the army you have. Will he live up to his word? I've never known Victus to lie. Play fast and loose with strategy, maybe, but betray an ally. Not his style. Then if he did try, well, we'll just find another Primarch. I noticed generals saluting you, Garrus. How far down the line of succession are you these days? Let's not go there. <laughs> Primarch Vicarian, honored war hero. Somebody's gonna have to rebuild Palavin when this is over. Yeah, somebody who knows how to hold a hammer. You mentioned you still had family on Palavin. My father is there. Sister, too. How long has it been since you heard from them? Long enough to be worried. I'm sure they're okay. That's the thing about getting old, Shepard. The platitudes get just as old. What about you? Any word from your family? My mother's in the Alliance. Haven't heard from her since Earth got hit. I'm sure sh she's... okay. Yeah, I forgot, actually. I never normally play as a spacer. I normally play as a colonist from Mindor. So, I think your mother's... is it Captain Hannah Shepard? I don't know what fleet she's a part of, but she has her own ship. Hopefully she's all right. So what's this Reaper task force you've been running? After what happened to you out there in Batarian space, I knew time was running out for all of us. The Citadel Council was a dead end, so I did something I never thought I'd do. I went to my father. He used to work for CSEC, didn't he? I seem to remember that the two of you didn't see eye to eye. To put it mildly. But... He still had heavy pull in the Turian government. The Primarch, well, the old one, was a friend of his. So I went to my father and laid out everything we knew about the Reapers, from Saren all the way to the Collector base. I'm not sure even I'd believe it. I had to admit that parts of it sounded crazy, meeting Vigil and talking to Sovereign on Vermeer. But my father just listened. It's what he did in his days at CSEC, putting together all the pieces. If the connections were there, he wouldn't deny them. And he saw what we always knew. The Reapers were coming. I'm glad someone finally agreed. He did more than agree. He took it to the Primarch. I like his style. Except the Primarch wasn't as convinced. My father kept pushing and finally got him to commit some token resources. And if you call them a task force, it sounds like you did something about it. What did you do with it? As much as I could get away with. And a little more. We hardened our lines of communications, expanded emergency stockpiles across the colonies, improved our early warning detection protocols. You think it helped? I'd like to think it bought our fleet some extra time. We'll know when this war is over. I know you don't have any illusions about what we're up against, Garrus. How do you rate our chances? 
I know it looks bad now, but I think we can win this, Shepard. For the first time since we met, we're not alone in the fight. It's something I learned long ago in CSEC. An imminent and painful death has a way of motivating people. Instead of questioning your every word, whole civilizations are going to be begging you to save them. After what's happened to Palavin, you still believe that? I didn't say there wouldn't be casualties. It's something Turians are taught from birth. If just one survivor is left standing at the end of a war, then the fight was worth it. But humans want to save everyone. In this war, that's not going to happen. Unfortunately, true. Okay, thanks for the talk. That's all for now, Garrus. It's damn good to have you back. Wouldn't miss this fight for anything. Now, I'm sure somebody screwed up something down here. I want to get the old girl back in fighting shape. And again, that sounds like Garrus. I'm trying to think, Garrus is quite possibly my favourite character in the entire Mass Effect series. I could be wrong, someone could pop up instead, but Garrus is pretty close. I like his character. You're positive you don't want to come over and talk. No, the gun battery is nice and quiet. If I throw down some rugs, it'll get downright cosy. Garrus? I'll be fine, Leora. Just... Gathering some thoughts. Alright. Any intelligence? No. Okay. Hey, Cliff. Shut up, broke a terminal. Entry 2. I'm not sure what to make of Javik. I approached him while we were travelling to a different system, but he wasn't very inclined to talk. What Lily does say concerns the Reapers and our possible failure. And Alliance Interrogation. Cerberus Operative. Some sort of ocular flashbang. Whether she triggered it or whether or not it was triggered remotely. The Cerberus operative basically was killed, or almost committed suicide, perhaps, rather than be interrogated. Something on your mind? Just old memories. I spent a few weeks on Palavin's South Peaks when I was very, very young. A Turian there teased me a little, saying that the mountains went on forever. I remember believing him. When I looked up at Palavin from its moon, I saw those same mountains burning. Hey, Glyph. Okay, this is... Deck Freak... Complete? Or is there other places I can explore? Don't think there's anything else. Could you open the map? Nope, that's fine. Okay. Oh yeah, Javik's in engineering now. Hey, Diana. Uzmik was that. She has got some curves. Yeah. Awkward conversation. We'll leave it there. We don't need to speak to Engineer Adams. Let's see if Javik's doing all right. See if he's ready for combat now. You're saying they survived into this cycle? Yes. We called them collectors. They fought for the Reapers. For a long time, no one knew they were Prothean. And when did you realize? Shepard had no choice but to kill the ones he encountered. They were all indoctrinated, and had been for a long time. I'm sorry. I am grateful. It was an act of mercy. Yes. I suppose it was. Hey, Jarvik. I am feeling better, Commander. I stand ready to fight. Do not be concerned about me. The years in stasis have only made me hungrier to fight the Reapers. Perhaps later, Commander. Okay, fair enough. Um, we'll head down to the shuttle bay first, see if Cortez or James have anything to say. We have some new armor, don't we, as well? Indeed we do. Uh, shoulders? More weapon damage? Sure. 
And we had some greaves. It's a big health boost drop for just some more weapon damage, as tempting as it is. Uh, fine. Do I? Fine, we'll try it. It might be a bad idea. We actually have to have some casual armor. I totally forgot about that. We'll keep with this one now. Okay. Don't really want to spend... Oh, can we gain access? So there is a new Medigel capacity upgrade. So we need to head to the... So the Huerta Memorial Hospital. Some more... Modifications. Oh, we need to check the weapons upgrade terminal, actually. Oh, a non-human medigel upgrade. So we need to head to uh, Spectre Requisitions as well. Okay, so all these weapons are still rank 2. So they didn't rank up after Palavan. Interesting. I'd keep an eye on that. Anyhow. Ooh, hello. Oh, it's ammunition. Ooh, but this is something. A Geth cruiser and an Alliance cruiser. More models, thank you. Hey, Cortez. Everything okay with the shuttle? Just double checking the inertia dampener coils. It can be twitchy in these UT 47s. But don't worry, this bird's been rock solid. I always see you down here working your ass out. Ever take any downtime? I get my sleep, Commander. Flying tired is nearly worse than flying drunk. What about your waking hours? Any R&R? &R? I need to keep myself busy. Otherwise, well, too much time to think. I appreciate your dedication, but I don't want to see you burn out. I know my limits. I wouldn't take a chance with your life. So before this war, you must have done something to relax. Sure. I remember back when the Hawking was based out of Arcturus and I was just a fighter jock. There was this observation deck overlooking the main flight paths. You could watch every ship taxi in and out. When I was alone, I'd turn off the auditory emulators and just watch them drift by in silence. You know, there were views like that on the Citadel. Next time we're there, you should take some shore leave. Clear your head. I don't know. Maybe. Take some time off on the Citadel, Steve. As a favor to me. I find it very hard to say no to you, Shepard. As it should be. Okay. I think that might have been the first dialogue Paragon option. You saw the blue highlighted option on the left there. In the bottom left of the dialogue wheel, sometimes there's an option which is highlighted red. Which is obviously if we have enough um, Renegade. If there's a Renegade option available. If it's greyed out, it normally means you don't have enough of the appropriate reputation. Oh, we have 10 points to spend. Uh, hmm. We'll look at spending them next time. When, we, when we're about to go on the battlefield, I guess. Uh, is there anything else hiding? Probably not. That Primarch's got some real cojones. What we need are more politicians like him. Taking names and kicking ass. Hey. Hey. Nope, oh, nothing else? Okay. Is there anything else hiding around this corner? Yes, no, maybe. No, okay. Weapon bench. Right. Don't think there's anything in the captain's cabin. Let's go up to CIC. Commander, are you alright? It was fairly intense up here. I can only imagine what it was like down on that moon. I thought you'd be more concerned about Edie. Edie is a huge asset to this team. If she'd told me about her plan to obtain a body, I'd have volunteered to help. I do not wish to force a conflict of interest between our friendship and your duty. I'd have preferred a conflict of interest to a hard restart of half our systems. But thanks, regardless. While you're here, though, I found something while scanning Alliance channels. Grissom Academy is requesting help. The Reaper Invasion Front will hit them soon. 
I thought the war would close most schools. Grissom Academy is more specialized than a normal school. It's home to some of the smartest students humanity has to offer. Their Ascension Project helps gifted young biotics. If it had been open 20 years ago, I bet you'd have been there. Yes, I sent a young man named David Archer there. I'm just surprised they're still open. Some of their work has Alliance support. That might be why they stayed. What can we do? A Turian evac transport responded to their distress call. So normally, I'd say we don't need to do anything. But something sounded off in the Turian signal. I had Edie perform an analysis. It's fake. Edie thinks it's Cerberus. She said the fake Turian signal was similar to the one that lured you to a collector ship? Long story. In any event, whoever faked the signal wants us to think Grissom Academy's being evacuated. But I believe they're still in danger. Interesting. Good catch. If this really is Cerberus, hopefully this operation is something worth investigating. It could be simple disinformation. Trainer, good catch. Thank you, Commander. Okay. Grissom Academy. We'll go check that place out then before we rally this war council, this war summit. See, new messages. Lots of new messages. Okay. From Arya to Loke, the self-proclaimed queen, if you're feeling dramatic, of Omega. Shepard, I have something important I need to discuss with you. It's sensitive, so we'll need privacy. I'll arrange for that soon. In the meanwhile, come see me on the Citadel in the amply named Purgatory. I have a few ideas for your war. And to be honest, I think this is the same message. I have a proposition for you. If you don't want to pass it up, I'm in an A-club in the Citadel. There is a DLC. I've never actually done the DLC before, but there is a DLC called Omega. So I think this might be a prelude to it, so we can probably do this DLC now if we so chose. We'll go meet her at least, and I think Purgatory is in a new area, the Citadel, we couldn't, we couldn't visit earlier. So it'll be something to check out. Urgent message from Amaral Hackett. There's an Alliance researcher working on the Citadel called Dr. Garrett Bryson. We need you to meet with him right away. Has uncovered new information about the Reapers that could have a direct bearing on the war. Visit his laboratory. I've called and sent messages but gotten no response with Earth's comm system out. I don't expect this will get through. But I heard a rumour that the Normandy docked here at the Citadel. Oh, it's Fane. Fane Krios, the assassin. Are you alive? I'm at Huerta Memorial Hospital under the name Tanar Nuara. Please excuse the moniker and me email's encryption. In my line of work, it is unwise to advertise my location, particularly when I'm not in good health. Which is true, he does have some sort of infection which is killing him due to the moisture in his lungs, I believe it is. Jordan Bow, I'm with Special Tactics and Recon. While some have concerns about your past activities, many of us in the STNR took your warnings about the Reapers seriously. I'm reaching out to you because I have information that could tie agents with significant political power to the Reapers. Meet me in the Citadel Embassy. And Ashley Williams. Is she up and about? Commander, I don't know how to say this. Odina wants me to be a Spectre. Crazy, I know. Not a big fan of Odina, but he can make the Spectre thing happen. He's pressing me for an answer, but I don't know what to tell him. I'm too sore to get out of bed. Oh, I guess not then. And this gets dropped on me. I told him I'd think about it. If you find yourself near the Citadel, drop by the hospital. Okay. So, a lot of things we need to go check out then. Including a couple of more side missions, so... Something to definitely look into. First things first, so let's go see Joker and Edie. Hey, Commander, check out my co-pilot! <laughs> so she installed herself into the new body without any help from you? Come on, Commander, don't you trust me? Okay, let me put it this way. If I knew that Edie was going to install herself into a sexy robot body, do you honestly think I'd be able to keep quiet about it? Look at that! I would have baked a cake. 
I am right here, Jack. Yes, you are, Edie. Yes, you are. <laughs> God damn it. <sighs> hey, I know I used to rag on Garrus for being all angry, but I'm glad he's back. There's a whole lot of crap out there and he's a bullet between the eyes. Plus, we might need something calibrated. Yeah. Hey, Edie. Hello, Shepard. Still getting used to greeting people in person? No. I require only one occurrence to adapt to a new concept. How are you adjusting to the arms and legs? I am interested to see how this body performs under real combat conditions, if I could accompany you sometime. Without stress testing, there is no way of knowing if it has serious design oversights. At the moment, it appears adequate. That's not the word I'd use to describe you. Perhaps we should speak privately. I'll be over here, flying the ship. What's this about? Does Joker not like your new platform? No, he approves. He wants me on the bridge. He says having me within visual range is important to his morale. I bet. Shepard, do you believe your crew members should be allowed to disobey an order on moral grounds? Um... I... Where is this going? Absolutely. I have no use for team members who can't think for themselves. Why are you asking about something like that? I was designed by Cerberus. I do not take moral stances that conflict with orders from my executive officers. But when Jeff removed my AI shackles, I became capable of self-modifying my core programming. I asked Jeff if he thought I should change anything now that I can. He deflected the question with humor. And you didn't get an answer. Correct. He has repeated this pattern in response to several of my inquiries. Do you think I should make modifications? Well, to be fair, if I said yes, then I'd be a hypocrite of what I was when I was letting Legion of Mass Effect 2 make his own choice. So Yeah, I guess this is the right answer. Only you can really answer that question. That's the point of free will. But moral decisions should not be made in a vacuum. If I do not ask the crew for their opinion, I could miss crucial context. May I ask you the questions Jeff avoids? When there is time, will you answer them for me? If you think it'll help, I'll do what I can. Very well. I will keep you informed. Okay. Well, that was that. I think that's everyone we need to speak to. There's nothing up in Shepard's cabin. Is he? I mean, we've already spoke to him once already. Let's see if he wants to talk to us again then. Yes, sir. But the Asari are staying on the sidelines. They'll regret that. The time for unity is now. The Salarians will be there, though. You don't sound very optimistic. We expect the Krogan will be joining us, too. I see. Well, then you've got your hands full, Commander. Was there something else you needed to discuss? I'm sure we've had this conversation before, so no, it's fine. More, sir. Keep me posted. Hack it out. Yeah, I'm sure we've had that discussion at the end of the previous video. Oh well. Commander Shepard. Hey up. That is. Right. We'll break this video here. And when we come back, let's have a look at our journal again. Shepard, turn around, thank you. So we have this Dr. Bryson, we have Grissom Academy. There was a Salarian Spectre, I believe he was, wanted to speak to us. And of course, Aria Talok, as well as Fane and Ashley, wanted us to drop in and see them. So it might be worth popping in to the Citadel first of all, 
Also, because there's new things we can purchase there. How, many, how much credits do we have? Not a bad amount. Yeah, I suppose. Okay, we'll end this video here, and when we come back, we'll have a quick look at the galaxy map again. It might be worthwhile doing a bit more exploration, now that another mission is done. But otherwise, we'll go to the Citadel and have a run around. We might have to split the Citadel into a couple of parts, depending on, obviously, how long it takes. I think there's a couple of new areas we can explore. So it might take us a while to still do, do, to do a bit of exploration and to speak to everyone. But we'll, we'll get there. This, of course, has been Anforth, play Mass Effect 3. I hope you've all enjoyed, and I hope you all take care. And I'll see you for more next time. Until then, though, bye-bye now.